I'm going to walk you through the exact process and programming that we utilize to be able to develop and grow the arms of our athletes. Let's get into it. Yo, what's going on guys? Chris Bonner from Overtime Athletes. And for today's video, what I wanted to address is a common question that I get uh, through email and through comments by many athletes, right? These are athletes who basically play football, basketball, baseball, soccer, whatever the sport is. Obviously the main focus is for to develop their speed, power, and strength to be able to transfer into sport. However, I do get a lot of athletes that still want to have those aesthetic arms, right? And be able to develop their shoulders, their biceps, their triceps, and their forearms. So what I figured I'd do is I go ahead and break down our actual programming and how we're still able to develop size and hypertrophy these athletes' arms while that's not being the main focus. Now, if you're a bodybuilder or strength athlete, I'm sure that you have a different opinion. Hell, if I was training a athlete for stage or for bodybuilding, it would be completely different than how I do it with my athletes. What you have to remember is I'm focused on improving movement, not actual muscle. But in the event that we do have some of these athletes that do want to specialize and develop and grow those arms, here's how we typically do it. Now, majority of our programs are a four day split. So that's where I'm gonna start and go over. Our first basically foundational program is a four day per week program where there's two upper body days, two lower body days, and they stagger. So it might go up or lower, rest day, upper, lower, again, repeat. The way that I break that down within that week is essentially I perform on the first upper body day. They're gonna get through their primary push and pull. These are going to be balanced through horizontal push and pull and vertical push and pull, and they're balanced through those two days. So through that alone, they are getting the stimulus through their arms, okay? So what I mean by that is when they're vertically pushing, they're obviously working and developing the shoulder. When they're horizontally pushing, they're obviously developing the anterior delt. When they're uh, pulling, they're working the rear delt. When they're pulling vertically, they're also working the rear delt. So they are getting stimulus to the arms when they do that, especially arm flexion and arm extension. It's just not the primary isolated movement. So what I do after we do the primary push and pull, we then shift to hitting a shoulder supplemental exercise. And this is where we can kind of play with parameters and elicit that hypertrophy response. So on day one, I usually perform a lateral movement, isolated shoulder movement. So this is going to work that lateral head of the, of the deltoid, and they're going to perform some kind of lateral raise variation, right? On day two, they're going to perform some kind of rear delt raise, basically hitting that posterior deltoid. So it doesn't matter if this is back or forth, but the real thing that I'm trying to do is one of the two days I'm hitting a lateral and I'm hitting a rear. The reason why I don't attack the front is because they get enough of that through the amount of pushing that they perform. So we don't necessarily need to isolate and work that exclusively. We usually get that in. But if you really want your shoulders to pop, and this is what I learned from an actual professional bodybuilding coach, is really just working the lateral and the rear. So we just wanna get the most bang for our buck when we're athletes and not add too much more stimulus and stress right, that we, that's unneeded to essentially grow the arms. Now, when it comes to their bicep and tricep, all I basically do is I put it in a circuit type fashion where they're basically supersetting between their arm flexion and arm extension. And so if I go for a bicep, right, and then I superset it with a tricep, typically that first movement is gonna be a movement that's a little bit heavier, right, doesn't have as much volume, and it's gonna cause, and it's gonna induce a little bit more stress. So for instance, if on day one I perform a bicep tricep, let's say I'm doing like a heavy easy bar curl for like eight to 10 reps. And then let's say tricep, they just do like a band tricep extension for like 15 to 20. The tricep extension isn't gonna elicit the same amount of stress that they do when they go bicep. So it's just a little nuance as far as changing the intensity and the rep scheme and the overall movement. So let's say we go to upper body day two and I flip tricep, bicep, tricep here, I might go a heavy dumbbell rolling tricep extension or easy bar skull crushers where we can elicit a lot more stress to the tricep. And then with the bicep, let's say we do something like a uh, cable curl 
a hammer curl, okay? So again, you can see I go up in volume, it's not gonna elicit the same amount of stress as when we go heavy with like an easy bar or, bar or barbell curl there. One thing I also wanna note is when I go between these two, I'm attacking the muscles from a little bit different way. So what I mean by that is, when I do the first or second bicep, I might perform like a hammer curl, and then on the second day, I'm gonna have the athlete externally rotate, at the thumb so they're attacking the bicep at a little bit different angle right so that we're making sure we're checking all those boxes of hitting that now moving forward of seeing how i developed that split that's essential to what i'm doing and we can play when it comes to these isolated single joint movements we can play with volume throughout their entire off season. So while we get into the primary pushes later in the off season and we're staying at six reps below, I could stay above eight reps here when we actually perform those isolated movements because they're not gonna elicit that much stress to the actual body as a whole where we can't still focus on a lot of those speed plyos and things that we're developing to transfer on the field. Now, moving forward to four day total, uh, if they're doing total body, total body is something I like to shift to late in our off season where I'm trying to mitigate some of the stress and I want to not focus on hammering a specific body part or movement, but overall work the body as a whole because athletes tend to add a lot more of their skill. So I got to basically compensate for the amount of work that they have uh, increased throughout the end or as they near in season. So in that case, what I'm doing is I have a four day, same thing, you know, I might go Monday, Tuesday off, Thursday, Friday, so four days. And all I'm doing is flipping each day. So I'll hit a bicep, then a tricep, then I'll flip back and I'll hit a bicep tricep. The nuance here is I'm working the isolated, single joint isolated movement opposite of their primary. So what that means is let's say Monday, we go in and we're pushing heavy, right? Horizontally, let's say we're doing a heavy dumbbell bench press, heavy bench press, heavy close grip, whatever it is that they're working that horizontal push I'm going to flip down here what they do. So basically I'm not gonna restress the tricep because they just got that stimulus. I'm actually gonna work the bicep that day. So let's say for instance, they come in on day two and let's say their primary upper body movement is a pull, like a heavy row or a heavy weighted pull up. Well, I'm going to for the auxiliary movement is work a arm extension, which is a tricep. So I'm just flipping them to be able to get a, a little bit different stimulus and make sure that we're touching it each day. Now, if this is an athlete that really wants to work it and we wanna specialize and really focus on this, here's a couple more parameters that we utilize. So one thing that I like to do is simple pre-fatigue. So let's say up here, I'm early on in the off season, I wanna add a little bit more volume and I wanna get a little bit more stimulus to grow those arms. I love performing a pre-fatigue method where you're gonna go a heavy, low volume movement let's say we did like a heavy barbell curl, right? And let's say we're doing anywhere from, I like to stay like six to 10 reps. And then let's say I wanna go ahead and burn something out. I'm gonna go ahead and immediately after that perform a light high volume. So you could do incline curl right immediately after that. Let's say we drop the weight. Let's say we perform with like 15 pound dumbbells and I just tell them to give me like 15 to 20 repetitions. Now what I can do is elicit a great response with reduced time and really kind of uh, elicit that hypertrophy with the most bang for our buck. So I really like performing supersets where I go heavy low volume to light high volume, hit three sets, and they're able to get the stimulus that I'm trying to achieve. Another thing that I like to do up here is I like to go add a simple nuance of a slow eccentric. Now this is nothing groundbreaking, but just by having to perform that same incline bicep and have them count three to five seconds on the way down under control, I'm able to elicit that response. Thing that you gotta keep in mind is when you're really working with athletes and all the focus is on developing their speed, change of direction, agility, power, strength, Arms are, are like, you know, the, the single joint isolated movements are, are like down at the bottom of the barrel. So they're just going through the motions by the time they get through the auxiliaries. If I need to achieve and, and basically grow and develop them, adding a simple eccentric to that 
that bicep or tricep exercise is going to completely change the game for them to be able to grow. The last thing is going to be a simple high volume. I love 20 rep sets. 20 rep sets, especially for those isolated movements, are a game changer because sometimes the athletes just go through the motion, but once you start to climb up through those 20 rep sets, you can really start to achieve and get the stimulus that you want. One more thing that I'm gonna add is, if it's extra work parameters, and I get a lot of athletes who ask me, well, can I add an extra day? You know, I go four day split, can I go in on a Saturday or Wednesday? This is what I commonly tell them. I'll tell them to go ahead and make sure they rest on Wednesday and skip Wednesday. Do some active recovery because you got to come back for two more training bouts on Thursday and Friday. However, when you do have the weekend, let's say you want to hit a Saturday morning and you want to add a little bit more, make sure that you perform it on that Saturday so that you have time to essentially recover until Monday. And the second thing that I often program out for them is there's no multi-joint exercise. So there's no compound lifts in there. So for instance, what I mean by that is if we're going to develop the shoulders, I'm gonna have them perform front, lateral, rear delt raises, but I won't have them perform any kind of vertical pushes because we don't wanna over fatigue the nervous system for the training that we have that's really the main focus. But also too, we wanna make sure that we're just touching right and developing the muscles that we want so i know this is a little bit long-winded but i want to make sure that i can go ahead and get over to you guys exactly how we're doing it there's nothing groundbreaking because remember your main focus is not how you look right it's how you play we don't want any guys who look like tarzan play like jane we want to make sure that we continue to focus on proper movement patterns at a fast powerful motion the arms are secondary but if you want to grow them this is how i do it Hope that helps. I'll catch you guys next time.